In this video, we're going to look at the mutable nature of a list. Let's consider this computer program and let's model it using the execution space that I've shown many times throughout this particular playlist. Now when the program runs, we know we're going to get this execution space and this first line here is going to create a list. And the list indeed is going to be an instance of the list class. And if we see what we will get, I like to show the following, where here we have the name of the list, list underscore one, and it will contain the reference to the object, which is this here. So if we look at the animation, what we will see, we will see here the reference, and over here we can see we have the two, three, and the five, which were defined here in this program statement. And consequently, we can see that this and this are bound by this particular link here. If we now consider this particular line of code here, you can see that we're referencing this, which is list underscore one, but it is going to be the first element as shown by this zero here. So we're going to be referencing this within the list object. And you can see that 11 is going to be assigned to this. So if you keep your eye on here, you can see that this 2 effectively becomes overwritten with 11. If we now consider this program statement, we can see that we're going to be assigning 13 to this particular element in the list. And of course, this element is this one here, which we can see currently contains 3. So after the program statement executes, the one we're considering, the 3 will actually become 13, as you can see here. Now, this program statement will alter this particular element here from its current value of 5 to 17. So if you keep your eye on this element, you can see it changes from 5 to 17. If we now consider this program statement, which is a message to the object list underscore one that will invoke this particular append method, we can see that we're going to append 19 to the list as it currently stands. Now this is the list and you can see it's got 11, 13 and 17. But when we execute the program statement we're discussing now, you can see appended to the end of this list, we will get 19. Now what this program has shown it's shown that we started off with list underscore one containing two, three, and five. Then we changed the two, the three, and the five to 11, 13, and 17 respectively. And then, of course, we added an additional element to the list that contained 19. Now, this shows us that a list is an example of a mutable type in Python, meaning its values can be altered as you've seen in this example. Here you can see I've got a computer program. Now this is essentially the same computer program as the one we've just been looking at, except I've got some print statements to show us what's happening when this program actually executes. We can see here we've created a list that contains the elements two, three, and five. And on this line, we're going to print the list and we're going to print the ID of the list. Now remember, the ID is a function that returns the unique identifier and the object we're asking it to tell us the ID of is list underscore one. So when the program statement here executes, this is what we get at the output. And we can see that it gives us the list being two, three, and five, and indeed the ID is this particular number here. Now this particular program statement will change the value of the first element of the list from its current value of 2 to 11. And when we come onto this line, we print the list and the ID. So if we have a look at the runtime, we can see here that this is the list, and you can see that we do have 11 in this position, and here we have the 3 and the 5, because we haven't altered those from the list that was printed here. Now, of course, what we're particularly interested in is what the ID of this list is. Now it's had one of its elements altered from 2 to 11, and it's here. And if you look at it, you can see it's exactly the same as this. So the ID of the list has not changed. 
one of its elements has changed but the list remains the same this is proving to us that in fact the list can have its individual items altered whereas the overall identifier of the list remains the same so if I come on to this particular line now what I'm going to do I'm going to change this element to 13 and this is then going to print the list and the ID so if we have a look at the runtime for this program statement we can see we have the list here which indeed shows us that this has changed to 13 from the value it was and if we come over here to look at the ID we can see that this ID is the same as this and of course the same of this which it should be because it's the same list now of course this program statement is simply going to alter the remaining element of the list which is currently 5 and it's going to change it to 17 so when we come onto this line to print the list and the ID of the list we can see we're going to get this showing us that indeed this is now 17 and if we look at the ID we can see it's this value which is the same value as been printed by all of the previous print statements showing us that the list ID has not altered because it's the same list it's just that we change the value of the elements within the list now this particular program statement is going to append to the list that currently exists and it's going to add another element and that element is going to store 19 so if we now come to this line we're going to print the current state of the list and the ID of the list and we can see that in the runtime here and you can see indeed that this is the list this is the appended value of 19 but if you come over here and look at the ID you can see that has not changed because in fact we're dealing with the same list so we started off with the list being 2, 3 and 5. We've changed it to 11, 13 and 17 and we've added an extra element that stores 19. Now what all this proves to us is that a list is an example of a mutable type. And these print statements that allow us to look at the list after the execution of every program statement and also look at the ID of the list confirms what we know already from the first program we looked at in this particular video that in fact a list is mutable it can have its values changed it can have the values of its elements changed while still being the same list compare that with an integer an integer is immutable now that was covered earlier on in the playlist and here I'm just referring to the mutable nature of the list. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.